I hope you are doing well. I would like to start with something interesting. There was a man who was coming out of the bush and he saw uh, there is a pastor, there was a pastor giving baptism to the people. So he was confused what was going on there. He, this man went on to the line where people were standing. And when he approached this pastor, the pastor asked him, are you ready to find Jesus? Then this man told, yes, I am. So pastor hold him, hold this man, and dunked into this water and hold him some time and uh, lifted him up. And he asked him, have you found Jesus? This man told, no, I haven't. The pastor got confused what's happening there. He hold him again, dunked in this water. This time he holds some more time. Lifted him up and asked, asked this man, Brother, have you found Jesus? This man told, no, I haven't. This pastor started to get a little bit confused and a little bit angry. So he called him again, dunked into this water. This time he hauled him around 30 seconds. And this man started to kick his hands and legs. He couldn't get his breath. So this pastor lifted him up and he asked for the sake of God brother have you found Jesus then this man said sir are you sure this is where your friend fell in so today's gospel the context of today's gospel is where John the Baptist was baptizing people and the disciples of John the Baptist and the people who sent by Pharisees asked him, they want to find who is the Messiah. So John the Baptist told them, I am not the one you are looking for, but he will be coming soon. The next day, again, John the Baptist was baptizing. He saw Jesus was coming. And he introduced these people, these disciples, and the people who were waiting. He told, he told them to introduce the, this, uh, Jesus in three titles. He called him the Lamb of God, who's the one who's taking sins of the world. The second one he told, he's the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And third one, he give the title, he's the chosen one. Now, if you start with the Lamb of God, you need to understand the tradition of the Jew. In Jewish tradition, the Pas Passover lamb is the animal when God asked Israel to sacrifice when he struck down the firstborns Borns of the Egyptians. And this is, was the final plague he sent to this Pharaoh's house and struck down his firstborn child. And after that, Israel had got free from the slavery. And God asked Israel to observe this pa Passover feast to remember what he had done to, he, done to them. And he asked the Israelite, select a, a year old male, la male lamb and sacrifice when the, when the sun set. And what they need to do, they need to slot, slaughter its throat and take the blood and pour into the doorsteps of their house. And when the God of the angel pass over their houses if they see if he see the blood they will he will spare the house otherwise he will the destroy struck down the firstborn so they have seen that the Israelites have seen 
what God has done to them. And for centuries, they follow this tradition. The Passover lamb, they were, for the sacrifice, they nourished and uh, uh, brought up in outside of Jerusalem. And during the Passover festival, they used to bring this, uh, uh, the lamb to give the sacrifice. Now, when they, they bring this, sacri this sacrificial lamb, they pour or they impose their sins into this uh, sacrificial lamb and uh, afterwards they make this sacrifice for themselves because it's a ritual for the sin as well as for their reconciliation. When John the Baptist see, saw Jesus was coming, he called him the Lamb of God because he was telling about a salvation who, which is coming out of a substitution. The Passover lamb substitute to the lamb of God. The Passover lamb substitute the son of God. Now, we, that's the reason we, in the Christmas, we see this lamb of God, this little lamb, who born in Bethlehem, and we see that destiny, our de my destiny, you de your destiny, as well as world's destiny, wrapped ar around this little lamb. And finally, the lamb, this Passover lamb, sacrificed for the sins of the world. Now, this uh, Passover festival, the high priest used to bring this uh, stand there and the people used to bring this Passover lamb for sacrifice. So this um, high priest used to tie the legs of pa this Passover lamb. And the, some of the historians, especially Josephus, talk about this is the same time when the soldiers brought Jesus when he was about to crucify. And this Passover lamb sacrifice used to happen outside of, of Jerusalem temple. And the other side, outside of this Jerusalem temple, Jesus brought into this uh, mountain, the mountain of Calvary. And he was nailed into this wood, nailed into this cross. And this same way, with this Paschal lamb, Passover lamb, as well as the Lamb of God was waiting for their destiny, waiting for their time. And this is what the prophet Isaiah talks about. He was between in front of the offended and afflicted, but he yet he didn't speak any words. He was like a lamb to lead to the slaughter. He was like a sheep who was before the shearers, yet he didn't speak any words. And finally, this high priest take this lamb, this Passover lamb, and slaughter, and slaughter this lamb, and take this blood, his blood, take into a vessel and pour into the altar of the Lord and on the other side on the Calvary Lord Jesus was giving his life to his God his father and the high priest who is the father of all creation imposed all the sins of the world on his begotten son and after, as this pass over lamb, give all his blood for the sake of their sins, people's sin, same as the Lamb of God, bear all the sins of the world and gives his life. And as the lamb, when the priest slaughters and uh, flow 
pour the blood on the altar, same way on the cross, the sons of, Son of God's blood is pouring. And he says, like the lamb who gives the last cry, he says, Father, Abba, it is finished. When John the Baptist talks about the second title, he's the one who give, b gives you the Holy Spirit. He's the one who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. He was talking about when the disciples, after he, Jesus' death, were, they were staying in a room with a terrified mind of the soldiers and authorities of Rome. Jesus comes among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said, I am pouring my spirit on you. I am giving your spirit and breathed on them. And he says, I'm sending you through the end of the world. And the other title he has given, the chosen one, the chosen one of God. And this is where the disciples, after his death, they started to their mission. They started to their own mission for the church. They realize he's the one who gives them victory. He's the chosen ones who give them the triumph. When they heard from John the Baptist, the disciples didn't understand what the meaning of this title. But when Jesus died, when they started their ministry, they realized, yes, they realized the meaning of this title. They realized he's the one who is the Lamb of God. He's the one who brings the Holy Spirit on their life. He's the chosen one gives gives them victory, gives them the triumph over evil one. And this is where we realize this is the Lamb of God in our life too brings the victory. When we hear today's the gospel, John the evangelist asking us one question, have you found Jesus in your life? If you have not found, this is the place where you find Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away all your darkness, all your brokenness, all your suffering, and gives you a merciful love. And this is the word you realize him giving you, pouring out you the Holy Spirit. And this is where you realize he's the one who gives you the victory. As we celebrate this holy sacrifice, let us open our hearts to find Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, who is the one who gives you the Holy Spirit, and who is the one who gives you the victory in your life. And as we go from this church today, let us carry this love of God, this mercy of God in our hearts, so that when we go out, we can also give others the same mercy which is fulfilled through this Lamb of God. Amen.